Meglin. I'm Rachel Poli here with Ari Meglin, and we're your hosts for the Mary Rider podcast. We're on episode 120, and this week we're asking, what do you need to know about self-publishing companies? Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening so you never miss a show. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like, write a review, and share it with your friends. It really means a lot to us. Okay, so every author's journey is different. We all know that. Whether you want to write as a hobby or for a career, you can still publish your books in a few ways. First, there's traditional publishing, where you typically query a literary agent, and then they will work with you to find the right publisher for your book. Alternatively, you can self-publish your book by hiring outside sources for book editing, book cover design, internal formatting, and more. However, you have control over where and when you publish your book, how you set the price, etc. But then there are self-publishing companies, also known as vanity presses, that you need to pay for most of the costs yourself for someone to publish the book for you. These are the companies that we're focusing on this week. It's funny hearing the term self-publishing company. I'm just going to nip in before Rachel carries on. Because obviously when I ever heard the term vanity press years ago before self-publishing was ever an idea and now we're talking about self-publishing companies so it's a bit of an odd one because it's almost like they've rebranded and had a different name I know sometimes people assume that vanity presses are one thing and self-publishing companies are another but from everything we've seen it's the same thing just rebranded with a different name I think we all know why and I'm going to let Rachel carry on with this. <laughs> well, it's actually what Ari and I were talking about before we started recording, because I made a couple of notes and I was like, am I using this term correctly? I'm not entirely sure because I feel like I am, but I feel like people use the term vanity press and self-publishing companies like synonymously. Um, so for this, for, I mean, the sake of this episode, we're going to use them synonymously because why not? So To continue, vanity press companies make the promise that they will do it all for a ridiculous amount of money. But the thing is, the author will end up with very little book sales and very low royalties. Thus, they lose money in the end. Because the other thing is, too, the vanity press says that they'll do it all, but they actually won't. Sad as it is. For example, they'll promise that they'll get you an ISBN, which is super easy for you to get yourself, and it's fairly inexpensive and it's just like the one-time fee or cost whatever you want to call it it's very easy so you can do that yourself and these companies will also promise to self-publish on amazon for you uh, which again is super easy for you to do yourself and it's free you don't need to pay somebody thousands of dollars to hit the publish button on amazon for you You can just do it and Amazon walks you through it. It's like filling out the form at the doctor's, except you don't have to call your mom and ask you what medication, ask her what medication you're allergic to. And um, they'll also promise to market the book for you. And uh, spoiler alert, they won't. I have to say regarding the publishing on Amazon, I have seen a lot of free videos like on YouTube or I found them through Pinterest or even on things like Skillshare, the free ones or Udemy where it's actually had someone putting their screen up and showing you step-by-step things you need to think about and how to, like, they've talked you through how to publish on Amazon. Amazon gives you book sizes, um, page numbers and all sorts. And they've, I've watched videos where they've gone through and explained why you should pick this one over this one or what this size actually means. And they've shown you a book saying, this is what it means by this size. This is what it means by this size. And honestly, Free videos, people, where someone will talk you through the already step-by-step guide on Amazon. What more do you need? Seriously. And Amazon is actually very intuitive, too, because, I mean, I've self-published a book before. Like I said, it's just a form and you have to plug in your own information. You know your own name. You know your book title. You, I mean, you do everything yourself and Amazon will walk you through the process And they have plenty of resources as well. They have so many different articles and they have video step-by-step guides as well. It's all in front of you. You just need to take the time to do it. And even then the time really isn't that, I mean, it takes like 10 minutes tops. Yeah. And it's good to, it's good to do it because then if you're publishing multiple books, Mm -hmm. the next time you'll be quicker because you'll know how you did it. And again, and again, and you know, you catch up. Yeah. You learn. I have to say, I do remember an author um, I met who 
was with a vanity press. I remember I read a sample of their work that was like on a website. And honestly, it was riddled with errors. And I'm talking errors that a, a beta reader or a CP would have picked up. Maybe even the author themselves, they'd just done another read through. And the marketing that the Vanity Press was apparently doing appeared just to be listing them on Facebook. Just a single post that was literally a buy this book for several different authors repeated over and over. That was their entire Facebook page for this Vanity Press. And there were no links to interviews or podcasts or interesting facts about the author. It was just post after post after post. Buy this book, buy this book, buy this book, buy this book. And it wasn't even like snippets of dialogue or book trailers. It was just a link, you know, with a, you know, when you put a link in Facebook and it sort of pulls up an image from where you pulled it, like the book cover and maybe a tiny bit of blurb or just the price. And that was it. It was like, this book is a YA horror. And that was it. That was all you got over and over. And we've said this before. That's not marketing. Well, it is, but it's bad marketing. And we don't want that. That's ridiculous. So if they're saying we'll market and that's their idea of marketing, you could probably pay some 12 year old nephew a tenner to do that. Better value for money than giving to a company who claims to be marketing while just spamming people to buy your book so yeah just had to point that out no you're right I mean that that isn't marketing and there are some people who can do that um it, like you know super confident people they can just throw their book up on their Facebook page and be like hey I wrote a book go buy it but that shouldn't be a constant thing it shouldn't be a daily occurrence like every once in a while if you run out of ideas for the time being or you you um, you caught up to your backlog of marketing content, you can just be like, you know what? Here you go. I'm just gonna shove this in your face for one day. And you know, um, but it's it's not in a it's not a long-term effective marketing method. And I think part of the problem is people hear the word marketing and they immediately get intimidated because they don't know what it entails. Um especially for first time authors, like they, they don't, it's, it does sound very intimidating. The fact that you need to edit your book, you need to self publish. Well, you see what big publishing companies do. So you think to yourself, oh, well, I can't do that. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I just write, but you can do it yourself. And it's a lot easier said. Um, it's a lot easier than it seems. So I think it's easy for, um, first time authors to get sucked into these vanity press scams. But I mean, the bottom line is they don't really want to see you succeed. They just want your money. And um, I think if you're going to reach out to a vanity press and they say that they're going to do all the marketing for you, instead of just saying, oh, okay, great. That sounds awesome because I don't know how to market and marketing sounds really scary. You should sit down and ask them, what are your marketing methods? How are you going to market my book? What do you mean by I'm going, you know, we'll do all the marketing for you. What does that entail? And uh, depending on what they can answer with or, or um, get it down in writing, because if they don't follow through with what they say, if it sounds really, really good, then uh, get your money back. Get that lawyer. <laughs> That's a bit extreme, but you know what I mean? That's actually a good point. Yeah, you should be able to ask. I mean, even if you're traditionally published, you should be able to go in and ask what their marketing strategy is. And then you as the author should work with them. So if you decided that you really, really wanted to go to a vanity press, Rachel's right. You should find out what their marketing strategies are. And obviously what the time frame is, are they just plugging your book like three weeks before the launch? Is that it? Rather than maybe six weeks, six months ahead or three months after? So it's not just a case of, oh, we're going to set up interviews and we're going to set up blog posts and things. It's like, okay, but how long for? Is this for a short period of time? It's, it's such a weird thing. Now, as Rachel mentioned earlier, outsourcing is useful. We've talked about outsourcing book covers, editing, and things like that to professionals. Now, I know sometimes people will say, well, you're already paying. So isn't the same thing, you know, a self-publishing company is just, they're just doing it for you. And it's like, okay, but if you're already going to be paying a book cover artist, so you want something you really want, you want you know the design you have an idea for, you have the, the concept in your head, you want an artist to do that, and they're going to charge you, like, let's say, 800 quid. 
right, for a really good cover? Or are you going to spend a thousand pounds and that company is going to do it all for you and then take 200 off the top for themselves? I mean, it's literally someone just sort of third party between you and, and an artist. I don't see the point. You might as well save yourself 200 quid or how whatever the money off the top is and go directly to the artist. It just seems random to not do that. And that's the problem with vanity presses. They claim they do all these wonderful things and they take the time, you know, things that you're going to do. It's like, oh, they'll do it. But are you really getting the value for money? Is it worth losing X amount of money to a vanity press to supposedly do things for you? Whereas the time wouldn't have been that bad anyway. I mean, surely connecting with book cover artists, formatters, editors, it's better for the author to do it directly if, this, if they want to self-publish, just for the fact that you're building up a network and then you're connecting really well with someone and you can work better if you connect with them rather than you hand your novel to some you know, dubious company and then they pass it to an editor and they edit it and then it comes back again sort of filtered through the company and you have no real dialogue with the editor. Can't see that being a benefit, personally. You know, you might not even have a good fit with the editor and you wouldn't know because you're not having any connection to them. So, yeah. And also considering the amount of free information on the internet, I know I mentioned this earlier, that covers everything from how to format your book, write a blurb, set up interviews, create full marketing plans, launch plan, book launches. How valuable is your time really that you would just pass that over to someone else when it wouldn't take that much of the all um, other than a little bit of time and a bit of dedication because think about it once you've set everything up once you've found your book cover artist once you've found your editor once you've come up with your um people who, who you want to get interviewed by your podcasters your bloggers you know newspapers anything like that that's a, that is then an asset that you can use the next time so isn't it useful to do it yourself and then have this list of people that you've connected to? They did a really good job, so you'll keep them for next time and they'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that author. They were really professional. I'll use them again on the, on the blog, blog or the podcast rather than a company who does it for you. You know, it just, especially if you're a new author because it's so hard to actually make money on your first novel anyway. Seriously, people, if you actually think you're going to make millions or something on your first novel, no. So the idea of throwing extra money away <laughs> just seems stupid to me. Okay, that's my rant over. No, you're, you're not wrong though, because it's all a learning experience. Like, I, I mean, I've said this before, like as writers, we don't just write. There's so many other things that we have to do. We have to edit, we have to market, we have to do all this stuff. Like there's just so much that comes to writing a novel. and. I think people should do it themselves, at least in the beginning, do little bits and pieces themselves first, because as I said, it, it is constantly learning. And I know like when it comes to marketing, uh, the industry is always, um, it's always moving. Like there's so many moving pieces to it and new things are happening and um, it's just constant, constant learning. But some of the stuff like you very well can do yourself and it is, it gets easier as you go along with it, like with your first novel, obviously, yes, outsource an editor, outsource a book cover artist, and then save your money for the next book. You can remember those people and you can go back to them. Same thing with marketing, reach out to book bloggers and build relationships with them. And eventually you'll know so much of what you're doing that for your like fifth book, everything will just be secondhand. Like it'll be second nature, secondhand. I don't know why I said secondhand. Um, eventually it'll just be second nature to you so that for your first novel, you may spend a couple of hours researching the market, but then when that fifth book comes out, you'll still have to do some research. Cause as I said, it's always growing, but it won't take you as long. You'll already have most of the knowledge that you need to push forward with it. So with that said, when it comes to vanity presses and they tell you, oh, we do this, we do that. And we do the other thing. You need to be included in that process. And if you're not, then you might as well go through somebody else or you, you do the research and you try to do it yourself. 
And real quick, I'm going to backtrack for a second. And I want to say that the reason why we decided to uh, talk about this for a podcast episode is because my mom's old boss self-published a um, a memoir. And we looked it up and I realized that she went through a self-publishing company. She went through a vanity press. And I'm not going to name any names. I don't want to like throw anybody in the limelight. And I am not here to judge, but I feel like a lot of, um, I've already said this, a lot of first time authors, especially if they're not tech savvy and they don't really know what they're doing, they just say, how does, how do I self-publish a novel? And then these vanity presses come up and they're like, Hey, we'll do everything for you. And they're like, Oh, okay, great. I don't need to learn anything. I, I just wrote my book and I can give it to them. But the thing is, because she went through a vanity press, like my mom and one of her old coworkers, her friend, they were talking and they were like, I don't know how she got this published. It's not edited. It's not like, it's not great. <laughs> I should say. Um, and I did a little digging. I went onto Amazon and I found the hyperlink to the publisher that she went through and I clicked on it and I went on their website and I was scoping it out. And that's going to lead me into my final point for this episode. How do you avoid being scammed by these companies? Again, it all comes down to research. If you find a self-publishing company or a vanity press and you go onto their website, you need to do your research on the company because I went onto this website and I clicked on the about page and the about page listed the company's history. It explained a little bit, you know, when they were founded and why they were founded and why they do what they do and how they want to help authors and blah, blah, blah. And in between these sections, it was all five star testimonials from people on Trustpilot. But it never said anything about their team, who, who founded the company who their team of editors were, who their team of book cover artists were, who their PR team was. There was none of that. There's no face to the company. There's, there's no list of people. So that's red flag number one, because you have no idea who you're dealing with. You don't even have a name. And the other thing was, I was looking at the packages. Their cheapest package was $1,100. So $1,100, that was their cheapest. And that's them saying, oh, we'll do everything for you, which they're not. So I went down to the FAQs because I was curious further and their royalties were 10% for the author. So they're, you know, that you're paying over a thousand dollars and you're only getting 10% per sale. And this is without marketing. So they self-published the book on Amazon but there's no marketing behind it. There's, there's nothing. So how are people going to find your book so that you can get that 10% royalty? Uh, but here's, here's the, the kicker. You get 25% royalties if people buy your book through their, their website, through the shop on their website. I have never heard of this publishing company before. And you go on the shop, there's no list of authors. There's no, like they have a list of books that you can buy, but when they say, oh, take a look at our authors, it just brings you up to the, the book page, but they don't showcase the authors at all. There's no author bio. There's no, they're not proud of their authors. They're not showing them off. They're just like, here's our shop. Go buy our hardcover book for $25. And the author will get 25% royalties because you went directly through us, except we're not even marketing our own company. So how are you supposed to find us? They don't want you to find them through them. They don't want to give their authors 25% royalty. They'd rather you go through Amazon so that they pay the author as little as possible. So that's just a couple of red flags. If you don't know who you're dealing with, if there's no, um, there's no face to the company, they don't, they don't explain to you what they do and who's in charge of it. Uh, you're, you're paying a boatload of money and getting very little in return. Um, there, there's no transparency on the website. That's what I'm trying to say. There's no transparency whatsoever. And you go to all these different pages on their website and it's just like, here's a five-star review from Trustpilot from somebody. I don't even know who it is. I don't know. Are they one of your authors? How am I supposed to know? Because I can't find any information about your authors and about the type of books that you self-publish because there is nothing on your website. 
And if you can't find that kind of information, then it is a huge red flag and it is a hard pass. You just need to exit out of their website immediately and cross the company off your list. That's shocking. <laughs> That's really shocking. I think the idea of spending over a thousand dollars and I mean, think about it. A good editor, like who's going to do a massive job, like you copy edit and you developmental edit and you line in it. And a book cover artist, I would be shocked if those two together don't come to at least a, a thousand pounds, <laughs> like just them alone. And the fact that, as you said, with the example you gave, the 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 errors that were there that wasn't edited, and obviously I had that experience with someone I knew that I went and read this, and it was like it's not edited. There's obvious errors, like not the little one that slips by. That happens. I've seen that, but we're talking bad edits or no edits I should say it kind of it throws me the you're paying this money and it's like for what because obviously they're not they're not putting good editors on them and I've seen a few covers they're not always good covers so that's a that's a bad thing to to be putting your money away it's like in the end if you want to sell your book and you want it to do well you got to invest in it which yes if you are doing self-publishing it does mean paying for a good editor paying for a decent paying for a good book cover artist maybe paying for a formatter but that's it's the investment in a book and remember books are passive income once it's made once it's been written and edited and book covered and published it's out there so unless you pull it or it reaches a certain time and, you know, it goes to a bookshop and they pull it, it's just out there and it can always be making you money. So it's perfect passive income. So you invest at the beginning so that that can happen. And I'm just going to mention, um, as Rachel said, like, how do you avoid scams? There's a website called um, writersbeware.blog. If you're a writer, you should be following this blog. You should be aware of what goes on. They cover all sorts in the industry you know the um, publishing industry from like self-publishing to the like vanity presses to traditional publishing things about contracts literary agents it's a really good website to keep an eye on they put new posts all the time and there's always stuff on there so if you're ever unsure about something that's a good place to go to have a look do a search for the sort of vanity press especially that one of these new ones that keeps popping up you always see new ones ever since the self-publishing became a big thing. And also, if you're going to a vanity press because you don't feel like you can afford or, or manage to do some of the things yourself for self-publishing, remember there are programs out there. For example, I think it's only American-based, so, but there's a company, sorry, there's a program called Vellum, which I believe helps you format your books. And there's like a one-off price for it. You can buy it for a one-off price. And then you can just format all your books and it sets it out really perfectly. You're bad at editing for you, your own personal editing, then put a bit of money down and buy Pro Writing Aid or Grammarly or is it Hemingway? But Hemingway, there's loads of these things. A lot of them even have a free version that can help you at least clean up some of the errors. The paid versions are usually better and go a lot deeper in. They're good at finding like passive voice. That would cut down the cost of using an editor you still need an editor not saying you don't need an editor but if your editor is being paid by the word or being paid by the time and you've got a map you know not your novel's got loads of extra words in that could have been cut out or it's so full of errors it's going to take the editor a long time using programs like that will cut down their time and hopefully will save you a bit of money so <laughs> So things like that, think about that. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, Vellum, I actually don't know how exactly that program works because it's only for Mac users. It's only for people who have Apple products. If, I don't know if uh, you guys know kindlepreneur.com, that's another really good resource website. And they have a couple of programs themselves. And one of them is called Atticus and it's, pretty much the same thing as vellum except they um it, it helps you format your book but like they have a lot more different themes than vellum does and you can uh, 
convert it to different types of uh, formats and stuff like EPUB, PDF, DOCX, and all that fun stuff. Uh, so it's it's very similar to Vellum. So if you have a Mac, I've heard that Vellum is great and you can certainly use it. But there also is Atticus, and that's for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Chromebook. Uh, I haven't used it, so I I, I won't 100% vouch for it. I haven't used Vellum or Atticus because I have a I have um, I have a Windows PC, so I have been thinking about getting Atticus, and uh, you know maybe whenever I do, I'll do a review on it, or we can talk about it on the podcast at some point. Um, but similar to Vellum, it's a one-time uh, payment. Like it's not a it's not a subscription where you have to pay monthly or yearly or anything. You just buy it, and you have the program on your computer, and you're done. Boom. And I'll leave links to all of this in the description below, like writersbeware.blog, Kindlepreneur, the Vellum. Um, yeah, I'll leave links in the description. I'm writing a note, so hopefully I'll remember. Just that, it's like, I, I'd never heard of Atticus, so that's, I've already added it to my list, like I'm going to check them out, because I have Windows, and I definitely need something to help me format. Um, so yeah, definitely. That's the thing. If, I mean, it also works for Mac, if you do have a Mac, because it's actually cheaper than Vellum. <laughs> so... Uh, and again, I haven't used either. So one, I mean, who knows? Vellum might be way better than Abacus. I really don't know. But uh, just just saying, throwing that out there. I'll leave a link to both. That's it. A lot of these programs, though, they're not that expensive, especially if they've got like lifetime purchases, where it might be a couple of hundred. But if you're planning to write multiple books, especially if you're a series writer, that is saving you money. So especially if you can do a free trial or even buy it for like a month, month on month basis, get used to it and decide, is it worth it? And then think, wow, yeah, actually, I love how it works. I'm going to pay for the full lifetime option. Same with the editing software, anything like that. It just cuts down on certain things, you know, it just makes it easier. And then you won't need a vanity press saying, we can do all that for you. And then charging you ridiculous amounts or charging you not enough that would give you like a really good editor and a really good book cover artist so yeah that's that's not good i'm gonna stop talking now okay so with that said i think we've covered a lot that we can cover with self-publishing companies so we will turn it over to you guys are you considering using a self-publishing company or have you used one before and let us know what your experience has been with it or what your experience has been with uh, self-publishing yourself. We'd love to chat about it, so tell us your answers in the comments below. Uh, but if you want more of the Merry Writer podcast, then be sure to follow us on Podbean, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And for as little as $1 a month, you can join us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the Merry Writer podcast for bonus content. It really helps keep the show going, so we appreciate the support. But in the meantime, you guys can tune in every Wednesday for a new episode of the Merry Writer Podcast, where we ask all the right questions. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Writer's Block. We hate our brains. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.